Hello, my name is Uli Neumann. I'm captain of Lufthansa 714 from Munich to Tokyo Haneda. We are flying today on a Airbus 350 and the reason why you can see us is the fact that Eclipse.com is going to join us. Yes, hello everybody. My name is Andreas Eder. I'm senior first officer today on a flight to Haneda. Right now we are in the flight operations center in Munich of Lufthansa German Airlines. Uh, this is the, the building where the operation is planned, the operation is conducted, where we have our uh, staffing, where we have our scheduling for the flights and also we have uh, some information concerning new products for our cabin crews and so on. This is the Flight Operations Center in Munich. Good afternoon, I'm Matthias Kirkas. I'm first officer on this flight today to uh, Tokyo. Um, we're also going to take you to the cabin briefing. We're going to take you through a few steps before the flight and I hope you enjoy this video. So. LH714 today on the 350 X India. We will be 40 minutes at a schedule. Cruising there will be level 390, and then 410, which is pretty high. But normal on the 350. We have uh, 10 hours and 10 minutes flight time, yeah. And the remaining fuel of uh, 5.7 tons at Tokyo plant, which is not that much. The alternate is uh, Tokyo Narita. The weather at Tokyo, let's have a look. Yeah, as you said, weather is pretty fine, just some wind from the south, which probably will be an LDA approach for runway 23 today at Tokyo Haneda. Munich, we just saw outside, we have nice weather. And Narita also, it's good weather, mm -hmm. southerly winds, which is fine. Yeah. Chubu is fine, and Osaka is fine as well. Just some uh, the usual. usual no temps here, which is fine. I was there last week, so... Look, look pretty well everything in Tokyo. Some taxiways. We can have a detailed look at this later. Yeah, let's do it in flight. Yeah. yeah. At the beginning we have some turbulence when we depart from Munich, but just yeah, moderate, not, moderate, not severe yeah. turbulence and some thunderstorms activity the over Poland. Yeah. And then we have a little severe turbulence yeah, above half flight time, so about six hours, I guess. It's just until 3.40. Yes, all right. So we're above, this is fine. And the rest, some, some it's always the same here. The, Mm -hmm. The east coast of Russia, we also we always have some, some jet streams, which could be some turbulence, but it's fine right now. So let's take the z uh, zero, zero, because there is, uh, I think there were some, some thunderstorms over the Yellow Sea, uh, the, the Sea of Japan. Sea of Japan, there. yes, uh, we have some thunderstorms. Uh, yeah, we can take some fuel to fly yeah. around. Yeah. Technically, we have no handicap items. So we can go, Check and I can up. land the aircraft. <laughs> I'm watching this match between you and <laughs> Matthias <laughs> during the flight. Hello, I'm Uli. Hello, Uli. Hello, Uli. Hello, Uli. Hi, Uli. <laughs> Hi. Um, we're going to Haneda today, and the reason why uh, we are talking English, there uh, are two reasons actually. We have some regional flight attendants, and uh, there is uh, somebody from airclips.com who is uh, joining us today on the flight. And uh, because uh, the um, audition is international, we are talking in English. Okay. Now, uh, 10 hours and 10 minutes will be a flight time. It's very fast. And, uh, well, actually, I like that because then I'm on time in Haneda. During the flight, there might be some shaky moments. Um, not too bad, and it, as it looks like after the service and before the service, so in between. So let's keep fingers crossed that it will uh, be like that and um, it will be a smooth flight, at least during the service times. As you always know, Siberia, not so many airports to land. Take a good look at the passengers, if they are healthy, so we all have a smooth flight. Yeah. Let's move to um, the briefing back again and leave you alone, do your job. You do your secrets <laughs> because we do. Ha we have something, something to talk. Too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks. See you. See you. So we're ordering the crew bus now. 
we were looking for our flight number. You see a lot of flights leaving Munich this time of the day. And here is Lufthansa 714 to Haneda, Tokyo. We ordered the crew bus and it's ordered. Tell me anything else that the aircraft is fine. Uh, the aircraft is in a fine condition. <laughs> okay, uh, all toilets working. Yeah, all toilets, seats, perfect. Okay guys, so we're gonna do the outside check now and I'll take you along. Come on guys, we start at the front. So in general, we check the general condition of the airplane. Basically two wings, two engines, gear, no obstructions. The, the, the gears and the wheels are chocked. So it means that the parking brake can be released. So the brakes can cool. From the first flight when they brake, they have a lot of like sometimes 200, 300 degrees Celsius and they have to cool down. That's why it's important that those rubber blocks, the so-called chocks, are in front of the wheels. I'll show you later. What is special on this plane are the so-called multi-function probes. They're brand new on this aircraft. 330, 340 did not have it. They measured three things. They measured the temperature, the pressure and the uh, angle of attack. Uh, you will see when we, uh, well actually it's gonna be daylight when we land in Tokyo, but from experience I can tell you, they are really, really bright. When you switch them on, it's like daylight comes your way. This is one of the highlights, guys. This is the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB84. It's one of the most modern, and most powerful engines on the market right now. Still living 84,000 pounds of uh, thrust. Very impressive thing. Also here we're checking for leakage. If there is fuel coming from the drain mass, so if there is oil or hydraulic, there shouldn't be any. Here's the wing tank. The outer ailerons, also a very beautiful thing about this plane, the winglet, it's uh, incorporated in the wing, gives it this unique A350 shape. It's a little louder here, guys. These are the pack outlets. The noise comes from the air condition. It's also quite warm if you stand here, which is comfortable in the winter, not so much in the summer. Here we're taking the wheels, taking the wheels for condition. If there are any any tears, any obstacles, any items uh, stuck in the rubber, also we check the brakes, the brake wear, and again all the hydraulics, uh, all the lines. Everything is intact, no hydraulic, no paddles. Checking the tires again. 
Traffic fit. What's in here is the rim air turbine. The rim air turbine extends when you lose electricity, when you lose electric power. Then it automatically extends here. Same here as for the other gear. You can see the engine is brand new. It's the blue. Also guys, one more very important thing. Actually an FA aircraft also here in the 350. The static ports. Very important that they are open, clear, clean. No obstacles, no scratches. Very important. It's us all to be read out. One cargo compartment already closed, loading is done. Okay hey guys, that was it. That was the outside check. Let's go check the other guys. Passengers coming already. Okay, ready? All right, ready? Ready for breathing, guys? Yeah. All right. Yes, uh, we are in a 350-900 right now, the X-Ray India. The aircraft is uh, technically perfect. We have no dispatch message and no status message today. Sun is shining. Yes. I need the glasses. Not better in Munich and not better. Yeah, we have a fuel of uh, 72 tons on board, which is just the, the amount of fuel we ordered. Who is disturbing? Yes. You wish it was a living spirit. So this is my side. Yes. We have to talk in each now. For the guys who cannot okay. speak yes. German. I normally hang a list there every half an hour. Yes. Whoever is there is gonna come and check you. Okay. Okay, this yeah. is how I normally do it on a 350. Mostly it's me. Yes. And um, if you need anything. In between, you give me a call, please. Yes. yes. Okay. I will. I will do my best. It's fine with us. Call you all the time. I, I fine. just want to let you know. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All thanks. right. Thank so, you. so it's just gonna enter the load it was just received, and then I'm gonna brief. Yeah. Maybe then we have everything accurate. Do it like that. Fuel weight of uh, 178.6 tons. tons. There you go. Okay. Let's cross check. 32.0. This is correct. Yeah, perfect. And takeoff weight is 250. 0.1. I calculated it from 52, so we have some margin. All right, ready? Yes. 350 and 100. Technically, we just discussed everything is fine. Concerning yes. fuel, we have the step climbs and we fuel the 72 tons. We have an extra 3.4 tons of 40 minutes with plenty of fuel. Concerning the weather, it's a good good amount of fuel we have when we arrive at, at Haneda. Yeah. I calculated the takeoff weight of 252 tons. So actually, we have a weight of 250.1 tons. Rattles uh, say with uh, air condition off, and we have uh, V1, V152, VR152, V2157, flex soft 43, flaps 2, takeoff. We have uh, green dot of 2, 119 knots, and the engine acceleration of 3000 feet. And for the climb, we have the outer D rate. Very good. I expect the best to call departure from runway 26 left, which uh, starts at the Echo Delta, Delta Mike 26 left, then the waypoint Delta Mike 049 above 900, 210 knots, so we have to calculate flaps 1 for this. Delta Mike 050, 210 knots, Munich, Mavic, Bibak, climb level 70, uh, and we have a contact departure on 127.905. Uh, we have 6.8 to 4100, which is not a big deal for 350. Just increased acceleration to 4,200, so we have no deal at all. Acceleration is 4,200 feet. So, one thing left to brief is the engine failure. Yes. Straight ahead to the point is called uh, Book X3. 
we have acceleration of uh, 3,000 feet. We will climb to 4,000 feet, which is safe above the MSA of 3,700 in Munich. And we are light enough to come back to Munich and land on make 26 lift again. That's right. I'll make the notes. Alright, so my passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. My name is Uli Neumann. I'm your captain on our flight to Tokyo Haneda. Welcome, welcome on behalf of the entire crew. Doors are closed, we are ready to go in order to arrive on time. We will leave the position in a few moments. You'll be informed later on by my colleague, first officer, Mr. Eder. And I think it's a good thing that you, this information will take place short before landing to give you the chance to have some sleep on board. Now I wish you a pleasant stay. We are cleared to, hold to Tokyo via runway 26 left. We back to Sierra as brief. The support is 3616 and start with a groove according to KSAT, which is in two minutes. Okay. B for start. Checklist. For start, keep in covers. Fuel quantity 71,900 kilograms. Altimeters 1016. 1470. 016 1470, down the line. Below the line. Doors. Closed. Parking brake. On. Mobile. To go. Off. Four star check is complete. As soon as he appears in the front, uh, we'll ask you push back. Yes. Okay, there he is. So push back please. Airbus, Lufthansa 714 Heavy, then 204 Alpha requesting pushback. Lufthansa 714, pushback approved, facing south. 714, pushback approved, facing south. We are going to take the 26 left. 26 left runway, so taxi to the south, short way to the east, and then like standard. Ground for cockpit. Ground shield, thank you. Ja, die Parkbremse ist gesetzt. Sie können uns jederzeit hochheben. Ich bin Sehr schön. Dann äh, kann ich die Parkbremse lösen. Die Bremse kann gelöst werden, jawohl. Bremse gelöst. Wir sind fertig für Pushback. Nase nach Süd. Nase Süd, Pushback beginnt. Äh, Drehverhältnis. Okay. That would be easy. Yeah. And most On of time, one. as always, at Lufthansa. Well, well, well. <laughs> Okay, engine start. Engine one start. Now we're starting the most powerful engines uh, which are in the air at the moment. Yes. Eighty-four thousand pounds each. Not bad. And so fuel efficient. Okay. So the flight log gives us an outlook of four 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 zero, which is fine, I guess. Engine 2 start. So the bremse is a bit Bremse gesetzt. Schleppgerät und Steuerung bitte entfernen. Schleppgerät und Steuerung bitte entfernen.
It's a very fuel efficient aircraft, by the way. Yesterday, the same uh, same route was flown by 340, 600, same passengers, same loads, 100,000 kilograms of fuel was right. needed. Yes. Today, we'll do it with 72,000 kilograms only. Ready for after start flow? After start flow. Like controls. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right. Hand signal yep. from the right. After start checklist. After start, and yes. Off. Pitch trim. Uh, uh, 32.1 percent set. Vendor Bionics extract. Auto. After checklist complete. Request taxi. Lufthansa 714 request taxi. Lufthansa 714 taxi to entry Sierra 8 via Whiskey 2 Delta 2 Oscar 2. 714, Whiskey 2, Delta 2, Oscar 2, Sierra 8. Whiskey 2, Delta 2, Oscar 2. Straight, left, left side, right side. Contact 121830, good flow, actually. 741 1183, Servus, Schönfeier, Abspieler. Mit Ground, Servus, Lufthansa 714 Heavy, approaching Sierra 8. Lufthansa 714 Servus, Taxi 20.3, 26 left, Sierra and Bravo 15. Lufthansa 714 Sierra and Bravo 15. Okay, Sierra's first left. Yes. Bravo 15 is the beginning of the runway. Exactly. So, right side, everything is clear, it's fine. Yes, uh, propose. so we just hold here. Yes, that uh, we can 
turn around. Yeah, if it's turn back in the area. Yeah. yeah, so maybe just hold here so yeah. somebody could pass by. But not, that's not a problem. They can no, come no. back yes. now. One for yes. us, for us, yes. we can. Take I've done some recent studies and it shows that coffee keeps me awake. I've done some recent studies and it shows that coffee just keeps me alive. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lufthansa 714, we are ready for departure. That is good, Lufthansa 714, move forward to the cut of one hold, one contact, 120505. Lufthansa 714, we move forward to the cut of one hold, 120505, servus, danke. Before takeoff, no, first contact. Munich Tower, Lufthansa 714, have it ready for departure. Should I take it? Yeah, please. Lufthansa 714, Lufthansa 714, Lufthansa 714, Lufthansa 714, Lufthansa 714, Lufthansa 714, Take of speeds, thrust rating. 152, 152, 157, flex 43. 152, 152, 157, flex 43. Ica Memo. Take off, no blue. Cabin crew, prepare for departure. Flex are off, yes. Everything is red. Okay, below the line. Take off runway. 26 left, full length. 26 left, full length, swim straight ahead. Pex. Off. Before takeoff, checklist complete. Okay, we're cleared for takeoff. Yes. Wind is from uh, 310, yes, about so it's quite strong as you can see. Right strong from forward right, as okay. calculated. I bring the aircraft on the center line, Perfect. then uh, there will be a handover. And we did a brief view in case of engine failure, straight ahead, acceleration 3000, we climb 4000. With beautiful weather, we could come back to Munich.
Flaps one. Speed check. Flaps one. Now I show you the hidden and secret places in the aircraft. A view of our perfect crew rest. If you just come in. This captain's side. This is first officer side. But because everybody's alone here, you can change anyway. It's a perfect place because compared to other aircraft, it's very, very uh, silent place. 
In other aircraft you always have a disturbance uh, through the noise and you have to wear earplugs. You don't need them in here, it's just perfectly isolated. Yeah, that makes, makes flying a little bit more comfortable. Welcome back everybody. Meanwhile we reached a cruising altitude of 37,000 feet. Um, we are uh, in the vicinity of Russian airspace. We will be close to St. Petersburg soon. Our further routing is, uh, well we took off in Munich on a 2.6 left, made a left turn quite straight ahead towards uh, Prague and then we crossed uh, Poland along the Baltic Sea to, to Riga and now we are close to St. Petersburg and it recontinues via Russia, Sea of Japan to Tokyo. We have about a remaining flight time of uh, 8 hours now, so that means we will be on time at Haneda, Airpo Haneda Airport. Matthias, just to talk about him again, he uh, is uh, in the fleet management of Lufthansa and uh, I'm, I'm also in the fleet management and uh, he's a special specialist for the performance of the 350-900. Uh, myself, I'm for the, the manuals of the 350-900, and 340. And uh, he might tell you something about the performance of the takeoff at the Munich airport. Yeah guys, maybe some interesting facts for you. We departed Munich uh, with around 252 tons. We have our takeoff performance calculation module and we calculated the takeoff a takeoff uh, weight of 252 tons which uh, gave us takeoff speeds of around 150 knots that's roughly 270 kilometers an hour with which we lifted off uh, we have uh, 286 passengers on board today plus the crew and uh, yeah, as we mentioned already before, very fuel efficient aircraft. We only tanked 73 uh, tons today, in comparison to a 340-600. It's roughly 30 tons less, so really, really very fuel efficient. We have a policy that um, if we have a manual flight, uh, pilots should also use manual thrust. Um, you will see that when we approach at Haneda Airport for the uh, probably LDA whiskey approach today and uh, I will try to take the aircraft by hand quite early well it's a non-precision approach so it's uh, recommended to fly it quite long without the pilot but in a certain stage uh, we will be able to fly it manually and if I take the side stick manually I also will use the manual thrust so this is one of the policies we we add to the manuals we get by Airbus I see now, I don't know if you can see it actually, because the feel is out of the question here, but it's a little bumpy here, yeah. it's a little rough. Yeah. St. Petersburg skies are a little windy today. Now we're just at the top of the clouds, so that's yeah, might be one of the reasons. Yeah.
so how is it when you I think when you finish with your with the European Flight Academy you can actually go to any airline can't you um, actually I think uh, right now there is an ATPL and an MPL course and the MPL the multi-pilot license is uh, for Lufthansa and Austrian Airlines and uh, the ATPL is for Eurowings Ah, okay. And Swiss has its own 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 uh, way because uh, at at Swiss there is uh, the government sponsor is becoming a pilot, so they need to do their own training. But you can apply. The government sponsors the yes. training. Yes, they pay part of the training. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So uh, you need to you can apply at the European Flight Academy for every airline, I think. But then you can decide where you can go. Yeah, maybe that's even easier later on if you have yeah. the same procedures. Yes. If you yeah. fly, let's say, for Swiss or for Austrian Airlines, yes. and at some point you want to change for Lufthansa. Of course, this would be if it's one the same of the benefits. Procedures, it's actually really amazing. Yeah, if you would have the same procedures for every airline. Yeah. And, uh, if you're interested in uh, becoming a pilot, there will be a link in the video right now where you can uh, can uh, get more information concerning the European Flight Academy, becoming a pilot at Lufthansa, or Austrian Airlines, Eurowings, or the Lufthansa Group Airlines. Uh, um, Yep. So, from my, from, from my side, um, I did the, the classical way to become a pilot. First of all, why did I become a pilot? My decision was uh, became more firm when I flew from uh, Chicago to Munich, and I was 16 years old. And at this time, the, there was the possibility to uh, to get access to the flight deck. And uh, at night, I asked the flight attendant if I can. Uh, can visit the pilots at the flight deck, and they said yes, of course, no problem. And so I went on the Boeing 747-400 flight deck. Boeing 747. Yes. And Boeing then you decided yes, you yeah. don't want to be a pilot anymore. Yeah, because the, the cockpit is so yellow and. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> you saw the Boeing, and you thought no, maybe but I reconsider. Was, when I was 60, it was very impressive, all the screens and uh, all the, the buttons and so on. And uh, yes, so and then and the, the captain was a very nice guy at the explained me what stars are in front of the aircraft and uh, how fast we are, how high we are and uh, and I thought, well, this is a very, very cool job <laughs> to fly to Chicago for one day, fly back and to operate an, an, an machine or an aircraft which is uh, like today 250 tons heavy and you have the luck to be to fly this, this aircraft so uh, well, I, I applied at Lufthansa when I finished school and then I could start my training the classical way. It's called NFF, Nachfolgeflugzeugführer, and I uh, started at flight school at Bremen. Um, when I, in, in 2002, April 2002, and uh, after six years theory, a six month theory, uh, we um, flew to Goodyear. This is, is the airline training center Arizona as part of the Lufthansa uh, European Flight Academy and uh, we did a practical training there for half a year which was a very very cool time because we had a, a very nice guys in our, our course. And we Every, were everybody says it's yes, such a great time in Arizona. Great time, but there was a pool, there were barbecues, there was a basketball court so we had all this, those fun parts and you had the fun of flying the the Bonanza or the Piper Archer, uh, which are very nice uh, small airplanes, where you start learning how to how to fly aircraft or airplanes. And it was like a campus living in the university, a college in the United States. You live in one flat, you have uh, one big kitchen. Uh, so it's it's very cool. All young people who uh, took the chance to to. to uh, make their dream of becoming a pilot true and everybody's very motivated so it was a, was a cool time and after six months in uh, Goodyear, Arizona we came back to Bremen and uh, then we did uh, the theoretical training again for one year which was uh, the last part was uh, writing the HBL test the Al airline transport pilot license and then we did some uh, f flight training in the so-called uh, um, Cheyenne, which was a two-engine turboprop turbo aircraft, and uh, this was the part to become uh, to get used to the European rules of uh, flying. In uh, Phoenix, it's very, very wide area, not many, not, not many, not much traffic, not much ADC. Uh, you have to talk to 
and when you come to Europe, totally different because you're going to a higher airspace. You have uh, airline traffic, a lot of airline traffic, and you fly IFR with the Piper, uh, with the JN. So yeah, it was uh, quite interesting uh, and nice too. And uh, after that, which is about took about two to two and a half years, you do the type rating on the 320. At this time, you could choose between a 320 and a 737, but right now you only have the option to go to a 320. And uh, yeah, in uh, at the end of uh, 2004, I guess, uh, everything was was done, and uh, in 2006, I started flying for Lufthansa then. Not bad. Yep. So, what about you? Because you did it the, 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 the other way. You yeah. came via the Austrian Airlines. You can tell yeah, people a little yeah, bit yeah. about that. Yeah. No, I did my initial training with Austrian Airlines, and uh, I uh, did the training in Florida actually. Oh, nice. We were in Vero Beach, going to the sea, and it was really nice. And then, um, 2007, I changed for Lufthansa. It was the time when we were looking for many, many pilots, and here I am. And I mean. It's actually quite amazing because the chance to fly a 350, I mean, you don't have that chance with many airlines. Yeah, it's it's really true. And it's, I mean, it's the most modern airplane out there right now. And the training is challenging, I would say, but yeah, nothing you can't manage. I mean, no, yes, a lot of studying, of course, and uh, but you can manage it. And yeah. also, I mean, you don't have to be like a physician or you know like a scientist no. when no. you apply, yeah. because I mean. Me, for my part, I did a commercial academy, yeah. so no technical school before I went for the pilot yeah. training, and yeah. I also was able to make it. You know, it's just a little more studying when yeah. others didn't have to, because you know when they knew machinery and everything, I had yes. to study it. But it is actually also fun, you know, get to yeah, know all this stuff yeah. and everything yeah. that has to do with flying is interesting, anyways. you can fly to Africa, South Africa, East Coast New York, um, so actually everything around the world and it yes. was so attractive, or well, it is so attractive. That's also the, the I think one of the big uh, advantages of the European Flight Academy or the Lufthansa group, you can live in Brussels, you can live in uh, Vienna, you can That's live true. in Zurich, you can live in Hamburg, you can live in Munich where we are living. Also, meanwhile, also at Eurowings, you have a 330 fleet where you can fly to the like Caribbean destinations, tourist des tourist That's destinations. Very nice. very yes, and you know, I don't know what what's going to come in the future. Maybe you can change between the airlines. You never know. It's, uh, never especially know. In, in our at our age, we still have some 30 years to fly. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yes, changes fast, and it's good if you have a. Uh, Good pilot training, good initial training. Yes, definitely. I would say, yeah, because with the European Flight Academy, you are prepared for everything. Definitely, you can, yes. you know, go for short range if you like. If yes. you stay there, you can go for long range if you like definitely. to stay there. Yeah. And if you're interested, uh, there will be a link on, link on the video right now where you can uh, get direct access to the Lufthansa application website to maybe just inform yourself about uh, the kinds of uh, jobs you can apply, pilot jobs at the different uh, airlines of the Lufthansa group. I will show you our crew rest on this Airbus 350, so follow me. Okay, we have uh, a couple of beds, there are beds for every flight attendant and they are coordinated in terms of the position they're working at. Behind you there is a space for the cabin uh, member who is in charge. On this side, there are two beds, 
and we have three more in the back area. Everybody has a separate place. For more privacy, there are curtains on each of an individual of their beds. Everyone has pillows, some comfortable sheets, and blankets as well. Everybody has also their, their individual reading lights. If you come a little closer, you see one of them right here. So those you turn on and off. There's also some air conditioning for everyone. And there are in each and every single one of those um, areas, uh, spaces for their belongings, um, phone, magazines, or something they want to read into. Not everybody always really sleeps, it's just about the rest itself. This entire crew rest area on this Airbus A350-900 is right above the guests. So our passengers are right below me right now. Um, they don't know that. <laughs> so very secret and separated area. So uh, what so are you planning to do at Tokyo? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, have you been to the spa? Last time when I went there, no, I went uh, to the spa. Well, I was in the new uh, Hyatt Regency Hotel only, only once. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, again. No, I was twice there. I was in April and I was uh, in uh, beginning of the month. But it, at this time we flew to Tokyo with only one night at hotel, so I did not have the time. One thousand check out the spa. Yes, one thousand checked. So, but it was a very nice hotel actually. Um, nice uh, clean rooms. Yeah. Very impressive lobby. Yeah, that's true. So, did you check out the spa there? Yeah, I went there because uh, second night they couldn't really sleep. And then I thought instead of just you know staying awake, yeah, I uh, go to the sauna. I tried. Okay, cool. And then afterwards I was tired enough to sleep. Yeah, we are planning to go to the Shibuya crossing. Oh, cool! Which is uh, just uh, two stations away by the subway. Funny fact: I read 2,500 people yes. cross the street in the peak times. No, yeah, but every time the traffic yes. light goes yes. green. Yes, in the peak times. I think it's green. Two and a half thousand people. people. Every time you can it goes sit down green. at Starbucks coffee and have, have a look down. So funny when Two and a half when thousand. they all start moving from from I think it's four four or five sides and. <laughs> and how they managed to get away and pass everybody. Yeah. It's so crazy. How many people living in Tokyo? Yeah. Right? 40 million? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's uh, five more times. More than Austria. Five times Austria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's half of Germany. All true star, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when I go back, uh, when I walk back uh, from, the, from the crossing to the hotel, it's about a 10 kilometers walk. And there's a, sh a park, and in the in the middle of the park is a shrine. You can go there and see uh, Japanese people pray. When you enter it, uh, there's a ritual of uh, washing your hands. And I always do that. <laughs> you always do it. <laughs> so funny, yeah. And then in the evening, I think we should go to the sushi restaurant. You told me. Oh yeah. Where. Uh, where they, they make this excellent sushi. Yeah, I know this sushi bar. You know, it's not this... Yeah. this uh, no running sushi. Yeah, not this... Yeah. As, you, as you know it from Germany or from yeah. other parts of the world, this running sushi thing. They also have it in Japan, but this is like a real sushi bar. So you're sitting at the bar and the chef makes the sushi right in front of you. Yeah. Really fresh. Yeah. It's really nice. You're sitting with your beer, you have a chit chat, you talk, you know, good yeah. conversations, good sushi. I really like it. So what's, really nice. what's your favorite sushi? Ah, hard to say. I think the tuna. Yeah, tuna is better. The, the medium fatty tuna is very, very delicious. I know tomorrow, uh, Uli told me, uh, because he's a real gourmet, Yeah. he wants to go to this uh, French restaurant. Yeah, this, there's, there's a Cuisine Michelin Trois Croix, he told me. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, it's a two-star restaurant. And he, he was there before. Um, and then they have a open kitchen concept, so you can uh, watch, watch, oh, wow. watch the cook. Oh, that's cool. How he's preparing your meal, and yeah, they have all those little pieces. Yeah, very interesting little pieces, very creative. And uh, well, we should have a good, good bottle of white wine with or something with it. And uh, are you drinking actually white wine? Sometimes, really. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> Just a glass. Just one glass. Just one glass. Just one glass. They have a lunch, lunch menu, which is. Uh, not as expensive as you would expect by going to a two-star restaurant, so it's uh, yeah, a yeah, good chance uh, if you're staying at, at Shinjuku at a Hyatt, maybe to try out once in your lifetime. Yeah, 
Yeah, we yeah. can try. We should try it out. I have seen it when I walked by, but I've never been. Okay. Yeah, I've never been there too. I just heard it by, by Olin. Uh, the last time I saw the, the lunch offer, I was like, oh, that's quite okay for it's a cool. two-star restaurant. Yeah, well, we'll have to try out the Japanese breakfast. <laughs> Japanese breakfast? <laughs> I, I only uh, saw Japanese breakfast in, uh, in European hotels when they had a lot of Japanese customers. I never had it in Japan. In Japan. And what? they have like miso soup and some fish. Oh, that's and, fine. Uh, well, why not? The morning. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. for us it's not morning. Let's try for us it's, yes. it's, yes. it's afternoon already because yes. you know yeah. seven hours time difference. Definitely, means and it will be will be interesting. <laughs> yeah. It will be interesting, and that probably will be very 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 good yeah, in the hotel. So yeah, we have to try. It. We have to try the the, the, the Japanese breakfast. Uh, it's also one of the nice things about a pilot or flight attendant job. Then you can have your sushi in Tokyo and your burger in, in Los Angeles and your fillet steak. Um, in Cape Town, for example, or Buenos Aires? Uh, the way I started becoming a flight attendant uh, happened by accident. I used to be a professional ballroom dancer with my own dance school, but it was uh, a customer service oriented profession. And that is something I wanted to desperately continue to do. And the uh, opportunity becoming a flight attendant, uh, I grabbed right on its neck and um, certainly it has even more to offer when it comes to customer service, uh, including traveling. Since I used to live in a foreign country, the US, I didn't have to give up that um, cultural part of uh, my personal and professional living. So now I can combine my private life in Germany and traveling back to the US and numerous other cultures and countries as well. Uh, pretty soon after being a flight attendant, I also discovered to the opportunity that I can take on some responsibility within the cabin crew activities. So I decided to become a PERSA, a cabin um, responsible flight attendant. That way I could take on some more um, responsible um, crew activities throughout the flight, take care of passengers and their special needs, uh, individual um, come up situations that um, focus on emergency or first aid situations, and um, just coordinating a team. So within all that, I found the perfect profession for me uh, Lufthansa also gives me a solid uh, workspace that um, has me not worrying about my future and um, what can I say, I'm perfectly happy here, uh, I wouldn't want to miss it or do anything else and I certainly see myself doing it for quite some time, if not till the end. One of the things that I really love about working as a flight attendant for Lufthansa is that I work with a bunch of different people with a different opinion and a different um, uh, reason for being here as well but the unique part about it is that everybody does respect one and each other's opinions and working together works that way as, as, as different as we all are uh, our customers are all very different as well so there's always something for every single one of them within the crew to find as well uh, and we have a good time and love creating that special atmosphere uh, with our passengers and within the crew as well. Within the cabin and without going to different cities and um, getting the most out of it. Matthias is an instructor and, and, and Uli and, and, and I'm an instructor for these three types of Airbus too. It's easy for, for the pilots because yeah. they are so motivated. Yes. Because they come in to the cockpit and they are you know, like in love. They are in love with this cockpit yes. and with this aircraft. Because when they change for the 350, what they do is uh, in four days of ground training, where they study everything theoretical, uh, all the systems, yes. all the procedures, standard operating procedures, performance, and then they come, uh, they go to the simulator. Yes. Through the simulator training that uh, lasts for four sessions, four hours each. And uh, yeah, you know, we first session is get to know the aircraft, yeah. you know, get comfortable, find buttons, find uh, menus because it's a little different mm. to like conventional aircraft to the 330, 340. And then, well, the training progresses, and by the end, we train all engine flame outs. Yes, 
we train dual hydraulic. Lots of all hydraulic. Exactly. We train uh, the electric. Yeah. So and this was one of the big advances of the 350, the 340, 330, and even on the 380. Um, if you have a dual hydraulic or have an emergency electrical problem, you cannot use the autopilot. So one of the two pilots is uh, very focused just on flying the aircraft and keeping the air. And on the 350, you also, of course, are focused how the, the autopilot is managing the aircraft, but there's a lot, a, a lot more interaction between two pilots during the, the abnormal handling because both pilots have the capability to have a look at the ACAM, which is uh, the display where you show, where it shows you what you have to do during an abnormal. And there's a big, big step ahead in the 350 that even if you have a lot of malfunctions, the autopilot is working. It's really, really a big step ahead, I think. Funny fact for you now, guys. Our cabin pressure is now, or actually the cabin altitude is now 5,300 feet. In comparison to a 340, 600, or 330, we're actually 1,500 feet lower than yes. normal. So that's 500 meters. And you can really feel the difference. Yes. I also have to say, I mean, I don't know how, how you feel, but when I fly those long routes, Hong Kong, Haneda, yeah. I, I arrive more rested. Yes, definitely. There's more humidity in the aircraft. Yeah, it's, it's true. I, I'm really not yes. as tired. Yes, it's really amazing. I mean, it's just a number here, but you can really feel yes, it. Yes, I, I think some newspaper, I don't remember which one it was, uh, called it it's the wellness aircraft. <laughs> The wellness, <laughs> because it feels so well when you leave it. Yeah, but it's true. Yes, it's, it's, it's true. Quieter, it's the way it is. Yes. It's quieter, it's more humid, yeah. the, the cabin oxygen Absolutely. is lower. It's really, really... Uh, That's because the difference. carbon fiber is so stiff that you don't need so much structure. Yeah. And it's more, it's, it's lighter and it's more stiff than a conventional aircraft. So where are we at now? Where are we? Past St. Petersburg? Yep. And and from now on, it's Russia. Yes. I checked the weather of the airport, so Moscow, which is south of us, is pretty fine, and uh, we also have uh, straight ahead, it's called Suftiv Car. so the weather there was fine too, so in, 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 in the case of anything, any problems, uh, we have any options right now to go. Best place would be St. Petersburg, I guess, or maybe Helsinki, yeah. for the moment. I'm tired already. Yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's time to go to bed. We will have, we'll have some sunset soon, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I have the second break. Matthias, he has uh, some time to spend <laughs> in the flight deck. <laughs> I'm a really poor bastard. Yes, another two hours until my break starts. Two hours, Andy. But I promised him if we make another air clips video, he'll be the pilot flying and get the landing. So yeah. Now I've got the luck to be the. The guy landing the LDA whiskey approach at Tokyo, yeah. which is a quite interesting approach. I guess uh, I have to talk to the CEO of Airclips. Yeah. Maybe we have to fly to Cape Town and stuff. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be a good project. Could I hope he likes it. Project because it's a, this is a beautiful, especially the departure is beautiful. Yeah. When he flight to the south and made a right turn towards the west, crossing Table Mountain, Robben Island, all that's it's a beautiful departure.
Yeah, yeah we saw. And I see as uh, this this was a wake up call for us, everybody. No, just joking. So um, I had the first break today. Uh, that means that uh, on on a flight like that, we are uh, three pilots, and uh, each has about a break of three to four hours. Because the flight time is quite short today, it was a short break of three hours only. Yes. Well, how did I become a pilot? It's quite easy. It was uh, a coincidence. My mother just read an applica and, uh, in the newspaper that Lufthansa was looking for pilots. And I was, I was studying uh, mechanical engineering at this time. And that was quite uh, a hard job to me. A lot of work. So I thought, well, it might be a good idea to, to do something with a little less work, a little more fun. I was not a pilot uh, out of from the beginning of my life, uh, dreaming of it, uh, to be honest, I was not. Um, well, so I applied and it worked out. I started in the uh, late 80s at a pilot school, yes, I'm quite old guy, and I uh, uh, came to Lufthansa after the pilot school at 89. So, yes, you're right, 29 years right now. Uh, it's a long time. I started on a 737 as a co-pilot, two years. Changed to the Airbus 310, who was a great airplane at these times, quite modern airplane. Uh, stayed there for only seven years and then uh, had the upgrade to become a captain. I was quite young at this time, 32. And uh, I, had, uh, I was quite lucky. Everybody, uh, yeah. he, he looks at me and he says, oh... What? What? <laughs> Uh, well, that's the way it is. Yes. You, you, you never have... Uh, y the influence on that is quite yes. little that you have. No, it's between uh, 10 and 20 years, depending on the okay. economic situation. Yes, and I was yeah. just in the perfect situation. Everybody yeah. was... Uh, everything was growing and expanding. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I became a captain and started with the Condor Berlin, which is a charter airline. I had a lot of fun flying to small airports, island airports, many uh, manual flight approaches, visual approaches. So that was good, a good time learning how to fly an aircraft. After four years I came back to Lufthansa, back to the mother. And uh, I stayed there for another four years on a 320 in Munich and, and had the opportunity to, to change to the A340 when I just became 41. Okay, um, I thought, is it already a good time to do it? Because I know, uh, I knew that uh, this will be my last airplane in my career. So at least 14, maybe 19 years flying on a long distance flight. So, but it was a good decision to do. And uh, after f three or four years, no, actually after two years, um, <coughs> I was, convinced to apply as a Czech pilot. Um, I applied for it. Everything worked out quite well. I became a um, trainer, Czech pilot on the A340. And uh, two years later, I was asked again to take some uh, challenge, actually, yeah, challenge. And uh, I became a fleet captain. So uh, I was responsible for about 150 pilots. Um, fleet captain is kind of yeah, it's it's uh, the assistant head of fleet. And uh, two years later, I got a new additional job on the fleet captain, which is a technical pilot. Technical pilot uh, 330, 340, and that was the reason why, with the entry into service of the 350. Um, I became a technical pilot of 350 as well, and that was the best job you can get on an on an airline. Oh. Oh. Sounds good. Looks good. Yeah. So this is the mini schnitzel. The this and some fruits. I think I go just for some fruits. That's yeah, me too. Just some some fruit. Thank you. Remember, we have the next yeah. 350 acceptance flight, and we also yeah. have uh, 330 yeah. and 340, yeah. 600 acceptance. Yeah, and I did, I did most of the acceptance flights for the 350. Acceptance yeah. flight is the same thing as you. As if you are going to buy your car, you just do a, an acceptance test drive. Right. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you do a test ride and say yes or no. The same thing with us. 
So if, if, if the aircraft is not behaving like it should, we say, well, not this time, fix that, fix that, and uh, we'll be back in one week. Let's see if everything works out. And on these flights, we do some flight control checks as well, and well, we do, we do have the fun. I found the mixture I was looking for. It's uh, do something, something in the office. I have one or two flights a month. Do some training or checking in the simulator. It gives us, uh, gives me a perfect uh, yes. combination yep. of, of the stuff. Hello, uh, my name is Tanya. I'm the P2 on this flight, which means at Lufthansa that I'm responsible for the whole crew uh, and also the passengers on board. And my main task is to lead a team, to build a team within a very, very short time. Most of the colleagues I have never seen before. Um, we meet in Munich, we do a so-called briefing, and then we have 10 to 15 minutes to build a crew, to build a team. I have to point out what is very important for this flight and what uh, is very important to myself, which mostly is make the passengers happy, make a very good impression and uh, also have fun at work. So then we go on board and we have a lot of duties before takeoff which no passenger will ever see and which is very good because this is the time when we are really really stressed. So it's always time critical and there's so many things to check. Um, the ground staff is coming, asking us questions and the gate is coming, they want to start the boarding we start the boarding, then when finally all passengers are here on board and the doors are closed, then <laughs> we can breathe, take a deep breath and uh, take off and we have the departure. But this is, um, I would say, the most stressful time for us of the flight. I have been working for Lufthansa now for 20 years, which is a very, very long time, but to me it seems like two years, to be honest. Um, I still love my job. I love it very much and every time I go to work I'm quite happy and excited because every flight is different, different colleagues, different passengers, different destinations. Despite you always have a favorite destination where you try to fly to very often, which for me is Tokyo today. Um, I like the culture, I like the Japanese people very much, I like the language, the food. So um, for me, yeah, I still have to say I've never regretted uh, to become a flight attendant. I joined in the year 1997. I used to work in a bank before, which is quite boring in comparison to this job, I have to say. <laughs> um, and I started as a very young flight attendant in Munich and it was for me very clear after a few months I want to become the leading flight attendant. I want to pass on my spirit to my crew and have a great influence uh, on the passengers' well-being on the flight. So, in general, I would say if I'm in a good mood and I manage to pass it on to my crew, the passengers will be very happy on the flight because they can feel it. If the spirit is good, um, yeah. And so I managed after two years already to become um, chief flight attendant on the short distance flight and then another two years going on. I already applied for the P2 position, which I'm in now. And finally, in the year 2007, I became a P2, which made me super happy. The engine, perfect engine. Um, a very, very little fuel flow. It's only 2,700 at the moment per engine. Um, it makes a fuel flow of less than six tons per hour. How does it work? Uh, there's the easiest explanation or, the, or the, the, the major reason is the fact that this is a composite aircraft. So if you want to know the major differences between legacy aircrafts and this brand new A350, I just give you some examples. First of all, if you see my arm, I can't reach the window. If I sit on a 340, the window is already right here, so it's for pilots is the most comfortable aircraft yeah. you can imagine. Then you have these great, great uh, monitors in front of you. Well, I'm 50 plus and on a 340 I still have to switch from uh, reading glasses to not reading glasses and it's, it's really a mess, I can tell you. On this aircraft everything is so big and so, uh, well, easy to see. Everything is uh, perfectly arranged. 
Now you see this this really huge map on a legacy aircraft. There's a small monitor on the left side with uh, much uh, smaller um, indications. Here you can switch to another system. This is our, our communication to the ground via the, the um, set phone or via the AOCs. AOCs. Uh, yes. Over here is our major instrument. This is quite comparable to uh, the legacy aircraft, but as you can see here, there's a vertical profile. Um, this is brand new, so this is the lateral profile you have in your old aircraft, and this is new. So if we have a weather radar image, you can see the two-dimensional image in here and the third dimension in here. So this is, uh, compared to old aircrafts, new that you have a three-dimensional picture of of a uh, thunderstorm in front of you, which is quite essential that uh, you can see if you are on top of it, if you are in the middle of it, or if you have to circumfly it, because there is no way that you can overfly it. So it's a big, big advantage. This uh, is quite similar to the legacy aircraft. You can switch the systems like that. Um, what is quite brand new, um, first invention on the A380 is the trackball. We, we call it KCCU, which uh, is a uh, cursor control cursor unit. Control unit. Uh, all these new the abbreviations. Keyboard and cursor control you. unit, yes. Yeah. Keyboard cursor control unit. Yes. And uh, well, it's y you can you can take both for uh, navigating on these displays. You have on the one hand, like see, you have you have the mouse on the pad, and uh, and uh, like on a computer, or you can take the KCCU. I just switch the same thing, taking the trackball and moving around like that. Yes. We can switch over there. Like, see, I'm I'm right here in the middle display. Uh, I can switch even to that display. I can get some information about this point. I can even navigate to this point by clicking uh, this feature. So, a lot of features new and uh, that makes it a little bit, let's say, complicated to those coming from the legacy aircraft. So what we always emphasize it, take the commonality, Airbus built this aircraft with lots of commonalities to fly, to, to give the pilot a chance to fly a 330 and a 350 with yes. a common type rating, which is a, a, a huge commercial benefit for the airlines, having one pilot pool for two aircrafts. Yeah, we only need four simulator missions to uh, train a 330 pilot and a 350. So it's about half a month's training yeah. in the simulator and theoretical training. And then, then you go to the so-called line training where you do some uh, flights with a check pilot like, like Oli is uh, in the real line flying. And uh, yes, after let's say six to eight weeks, everything is done and you can yeah. fly both aircraft. And I can tell you, Airbus engineers did a great job doing this uh, behavior completely similar to the 330. Yeah. So if you have a 330 pilot, uh, first time sitting in this aircraft, and you tell him just, you flying a traffic pattern at this, air at this airport, landing this aircraft, he will do it. And he will just have to, no introduction at all, he has his seat, he has his side stick, he has the thrust levers, that's all he needs. Then, if you tell him, fly from A to B, this is another story because then you go into the interface, and there are um, there are some differences. Yes. So yep. uh, this is another story, but just flying it, taking it into the in uh, to many of flying, it's the same story. Yeah, because flying like it's a 330, yeah. and considering the interface, it's more like a 380. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, we we even have the checklist down here, though we we now have no no checklist paper checklist uh, in this book, which we have on a conventional aircraft. We have the checklists uh, electronically, so for example, this will be the, the landing checklist. We will do it uh, at Tokyo Haneda, so you, you read it and click it, and even some points are, are sensed by the aircraft. So if you switch on the seatbelt signs, if you have down the landing gear, it, it turns green and says, okay, you did it. So the checklists are completely electrical at this aircraft. And uh, another speciality, normally this is a quick reference handbook. Is uh, there's some performance information, operation information, but also some abnormal information. And as you can see, it's uh, very thin compared yeah. to a um, conventional aircraft. The reason is that 
most of the abnormal behaviors you can uh, manage via the yes you can push it there. for example if you, if you have a if we are encountering severe turbulence yes there's uh, the, the pilot flying commands check abnormal not sensed yes severe turbulence so we switch on this abnormal not sensed page we go through there until the abnormal not sense procedure should be there. Yeah, severe there turbulence is. in cruise. And then you ask me, and activate. we activate it, and I say yes, yes or no. We can do it because yes. uh, it's a procedure we can activate. And I command activate, and if you activate it, we will see um, what to do if we would have a severe turbulence. Yeah. So switch on the seatbelt signs, fly not faster than 300 knots, or mark 0.85 minimum green dot which is the the minimum clean speed we have here um, adjust for comfort uh, and then even we shall keep the autopilot on because the yeah. autopilot is so reliant and it's uh, good to keep on the autopilot yes. if you have a severe turbulence situation but to be honest if we are encountering severe turbulence will, yeah the most difficult thing is to read this stuff yes so it's good to have in mind which are the right correct exactly. speeds and and what to do yeah because uh, Severe turbulence is something you cannot imagine if you if you didn't have it uh, in real life before. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So that's okay. the way we would would handle any abnormal situation or technical malfunction, yeah. which is not which is not sensed by the aircraft. That's why it's yeah. called abnormal, not sensed. And as we do not encounter severe turbulence, I deactivate yes. it again, and everything is back to normal. We are in one of the business class galleys. This is an Airbus 350, a very modern aircraft which has two galleys. This is how we call our kitchen for the business class. And on a flight to Tokyo we have uh, the first meal which is going to be a dinner. We already finished it and uh, the second meal is going to be a breakfast because by the time we land in Tokyo it's going to be 10 o'clock in the morning in Japan so people expect us to serve them breakfast. Um, everything is very tight here as you might notice so it's very shallow here you have to be careful and when we do our service we are three to four people here so <laughs> it's quite crowded. If you want to have a look I show you for example this is how we stow our trolleys this is what we're going to serve for the second meal for breakfast. This, for example, is going to be Japanese breakfast. This is only the cold dishes. The warm dishes are already in the ovens, which have to be heated up. This is for the Western breakfast. This is where we heat up our rolls, croissants, our hot meals for later on. Um, we also have hot soups. Depending on the destination we are flying to, we serve different components. That means sometimes we have a soup, we have extra rice packs. Uh, it's a lot of preparation, a lot of things the flight attendants have to know. And um, a lot of small, very little containers. As soon as we start our service, we're going to prepare the beverage trolleys here. And in business class, we serve by hand. We serve hot drinks, cold drinks, whatever the passengers like. We have an espresso maker. My colleague is just preparing a fresh coffee. Over here we have a coffee maker um, for the tea, the hot water boiler, and we also have an espresso machine in business class, of course. Yeah, we started the descent. Meanwhile, we talked about a safe audio, which is uh, over the island of uh, Japan. It's uh, 10,000 feet and uh, approaching the star via stone. We are safe to 5,000 and 3,000. Later on, the MSA uh, east of uh, Tokyo Haneda. Ready for briefing, Matthias? Sir. Or still sleepy? No. Still sleepy. No, is no, not sleepy. So, all crews. Yeah, we are still in the 350-100 X-Ray India. Didn't change the aircraft. No, we didn't change the aircraft. And technically everything is still fine. 
Uh, we checked some notems at uh, Haneda, which concerns some taxiways, but it's not in our area, so it shouldn't be a no matter for us. Um, so, concerning fuel, we still expect an extra of five tons, which is one hour of extra fuel at Tokyo. The weather is pretty fine. We have uh, two runways with the LDA approach, so it also would be a good plan B for the first moment. Then, uh, on the other hand, we would have Narita, which has the longer runway, so we could think about going to Narita maybe when we arrive at 8 tons of fuel but right now everything is fine in Tokyo um, we are expecting an LDA approach uh, of uh, runway 23 which is a little special uh, via the datum arrival so the arrival starts at uh, waypoint uh, stone 11,000 feet and 250 knots next waypoint is threat above 8,000 feet next waypoint is uh, Denny and then we go on a right turn to the uh, LDA at Dayton 4,500 feet Dario 4,500 feet Disco 4,500 feet 210 knots and then we have the waypoint Stannon, Dini and Dembo at 4,000 feet uh, at Dembo we uh, will have a 277 a localizer and a 3 degree fly pass angle. So we'll fly the uh, managed selected in lock fly pass angle mode. We will initially descend 3 degrees down to 1000 feet. And uh, then we don't have a 3 degree descent profile. So we need to do a little level off and then intercept visually a left turn towards runway 23. Yes. Quite important is the missed approach. Uh, it's important that we're not going uh, to overshoot to the west. So at 420 feet, or the missed approach point, we will turn left, intercept the course of 177 to Uraga, and into Utibo, and we will climb uh, 4,500 feet. Concerning landing performance, uh, we calculated uh, for runway 23. The runway has a length of 2.5 thousand meters which isn't too long nevertheless we have a weight of 192 tons calculated with the headwind and the uh, five knot three pilot we have a margin of about 1000 meters so uh, touchdown and touchdown zone is fine we take full reverse and we will locate the runway to the right okay land exit is uh, delta three we selected it at BTV and we talked about a taxi that we expect via Taxi route uh, 5, which will be Sierra Romeo and Alpha initially. Yes. Any questions? No. Nope. Finally, we will end up in uh, Papa 4 yes. and 106 as a parking position. Yes. All right. So uh, I'll do announcements. Um, switch on the seatbelt signs. You have control. I have control. Seatbelts on? Seatbelts on. doing announcement. Your senior first officer, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we almost made our flight to Tokyo, remaining flight time now approximately 35 minutes, that means we will land there at 10 a.m. local time, which is well ahead of our planned schedule. The weather at Tokyo right now, a temperature of 31 degrees centigrade, and the same glaciation you can see outside, we have some uh, few clouds at Tokyo. I hope you felt well on board and enjoy the service and I'd like to uh, wish you a nice remaining day at Tokyo or maybe a safe and pleasant onward journey. Thanks for flying with us and see you next time. Speed vertical speed, fly level 280. Yeah, dann bin ich wieder bei dir. You have control. You have control. All cruise blue, yes. I'm looking forward to sushi tonight. Yeah. First I'm looking forward to have some sleep and then I'm looking forward to the sushi. Yeah. Maybe I first have some sushi and then go to sleep. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs>
ロフトンザセブンワンフォー、コンタイトキョコンソール、ワンツーフォーで決まるわ。ロフトンザセブンワンフォー、コンタイトワンツーフォーワン、グバイ。Tokyo Control, good morning, Lufthansa 714. Descending flight level 280, passing level 295. Good morning, Lufthansa 714, Tokyo Control. Descent is flight level 250 by Rinoa. Lufthansa 714, continue descent flight level 250 to be level Rinoa. Rinoa, 7 minutes, so no, no problem. Flight level 250. Yes. There might be some weather at Haneda. See there's some small green echoes. Beautiful landscape down there. Yeah. All crew star. All crew star. So what we expect today is a nice non-precision approach from Andreas. Yes. And uh, a special one because the initial landing direction will not be the final. The final turn is will be on very short, on a short final actually. Yep. And that's the reason why he's nervous. Very and we yeah, we're very nervous. Expect some turbulence maybe on final. Yep. No, I'm joking. He's not nervous. <laughs> But get it managed. But no pressure on me. No pressure. No, no, no pressure. Well, what I see, what you can't see, is a beautiful blue lake down there. Looks like a crater lake. Yeah. No, I just see a river there. And there's already the east coast. <laughs> It's not a wide no, country. It's just no, a just small and very long, long country. Yeah, it's like Austria, yeah. very narrow and long and mountains and mountains. I think it's a little bit longer here than Austria. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think Tokyo alone has more inhabitants than Austria in total. Double, yeah. <laughs> double, double, yeah. double. That means we're exclusive, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so many of us. Yeah. No. Yeah. Lufthansa 714, contact Tokyo Control, 128.2 128.2, Lufthansa 714, goodbye Bye Tokyo Control, good morning Lufthansa 714, maintaining flight level 250 Good morning Lufthansa 714, descending flight level 250 Descending flight level 250, Tokyo Control, descending flight level 250 Descending flight level 250, Tokyo Control, descending flight level 250 Lufthansa 714, present position direct Daigo, descending flight level 210 Trust idle open descent or blue flight level two one zero. If you come across an Austrian, you should let him do the landing. Very exclusive. Yeah, yeah. You'll get the next one. <laughs> you did the landing in Cape Town. Don't forget on our last flight together. Oh, that's so long ago. Yeah, it's long ago. It's not even true anymore. <laughs> Beautiful approach at Cape Town, and I thought had to sit in the back. It was an interesting flight. It was a 340, remember? Yes. 340, 600. And Becky was a 340, 300 dented. Yeah. I don't think we'll need NTIs. No. Too shallow. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Lufthansa 714, Kelsey, daytime arrival, descent is 11000 by Stone, unit 2999-7. Lufthansa 714, descending 11000, 2999-7, daytime arrival via Stone. Lufthansa 714, I'm going to cross Stone at 11000. Uh, Lufthansa 714, cross Stone, 11000. All right, one one thousand and altimeters. Two nine nine seven, twenty two thousand 
600. 2997, You see these waypoints? You think it's a coincidence? Stone, dread, dreadstone? <laughs> no. <laughs> Intentionally, yeah, yeah. Pardon? Yeah, dreadstone. And the other one is Danny Datum Dario. Yeah. What was the movie? Uh, Dreadstone. I don't know. It's, it's, it's more your generation than mine. No, 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 no. It's it's very uh, born identity. Exactly. Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne. And the program was called Dreadstone. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think the director is a pilot and he saw Dreadstone in Tokyo and he named the project after the approach? Good theory. You see, after a long night, pilots are talking nonsense. So. so India Tango Lima is identified, but later on we have to switch off the LS for the log FPA approach. Lufthansa 714, contact Tokyo Approach 119 and it's 104. 119 and 4 for Lufthansa 714, goodbye. Um, no, we don't we have a limit on for ILS frequency, yeah. 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 Tokyo Control, good morning Lufthansa 714, and descending 11000, passing 16400. Lufthansa 714, Tokyo Approach, good morning, you are landing runway 23, expect early whiskey runway 23, approach, QNH 29997. Lufthansa 714, QNH 29997, expecting LDA whiskey runway 23. Lufthansa 714, Liquid direct to Denny. Lufthansa 714, direct to Denny. Nice shortcut. Yep. Visibility is really good. Yeah, such a clear sky. Well, at these weather conditions, everybody can fly this approach. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I did it before. So speed, very speed. Uh, approach phase is activated. A lot of golf courses down there. Yeah. Lufthansa 714, descend at Pipe Show, maintain 6,000. Lufthansa 714, descending 6,000 feet. It's fast idle, open descent, all blue, 6,000. There is downtown. Yeah. Exactly. Switch on the landing lights. Yeah, thanks. So ILS identified. Hold on, my gecko on VR1 is also identified. Mm, yes. So far, everything is done. Now reach us over there at 10 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. 2000. Lufthansa 714, Liquid Air Direct Datum, maintain 6000. Lufthansa 714, Direct Datum, maintaining 6000. Okay, for landing, I suppose uh, full reverse yes. and let the uh, BTV work. Yes, definitely. Lufthansa 714, descent reach 4500 at flight data. Class 5 linear is key, climate 23, approach. 
Lufthansa 7140, sending 4,500 by JTM and we are cleared for LDA Whiskey 23 approach. All right, so at datum I'll uh, insert the 3,000 and we can descend managed. This should be Makuhari over there. Yeah, that was where Drew Hotel used to be, exactly. Yeah, I see the stadium, Chibalote. Yeah. Alright, at this curve we're supposed to have speed to 10. Start reduce now. The descent will be at 14.3 uh, uh, ILS or localizer DME. India Tango Lima identified. Some traffic for the whiskey to two. Okay, it's above us. Looks like seven eight seven. So, again, important is if we do a Mr. Bunch, we have to do a left turn. Yeah, to the south. So there is this curve, and now we can go down to four thousand. So, when you speed all blue, 4000. All star? Yes. Descent starts in uh, about six miles, and we are clear for the approach. Yeah, the localizer is coming, so I can end it. lock blue, lock star. Speed is managed, and we can go on track flappers. Hang on. Lufthansa 714, contact to Tokyo Tower, 124, this month, 35. 124, 35, Lufthansa 714, goodbye. Tokyo Tower, good morning, Lufthansa 714 on LDA Whiskey 23. Lufthansa 714, Tower, runway 23, continue approach, wind 210 at 13, indicate your parking number. Lufthansa 713, your parking stand is 106. Yep. Flaps 1, speed checked. Flaps 1 and Lufthansa 714 confirm QNH. QNH 29996. Lufthansa 714 29996, thank you. 29996, yeah. So 15 mile, we will go down at 14.6. Uh, insert as 3 degrees. Flaps 2. Speed checked. Flaps 2. 14.6. Flat pass angle. Next check altitude will be 30 miles with uh, 3590. 30 miles, 3590 is fine. 12 miles, 3270. I can see the airport. Yeah, me too. 12 miles, 3270 is fine. Gear down. 
runway 16 left, cleared for yeah, takeoff, only point 247, Charlie 10. Yes, guys, please, please, for the departure. Alright, departure, guys, please, 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 Japan Air 257, uh, with you, we are ready. Japan Air 257, runway 16, that's the 30, 11, line up, runway, we are departure after arrival, runway 23, eight one. Japan Air 257, line up, runway 16, at Charlie 11. Okay, field inside. Yep. We continue straight ahead, then we do a shallow turn, that's the way the approach has to be flown. Uh, Houston, the 714, runway 23, create run, Venus 210, at 14. Houston 714, clear to land 23. 21014, yeah, winds. Looks good. Direction is correct, waiting. We'll be decreased by 10, so yeah. I think we can go down slowly. Okay, speed the slot. Delta 3, Sierra 3, Sierra Romeo, Lufthansa 714. I have control, we have control. Delta 3. Only point 403, runway 163, Charlie 10, landing up on the way. Runway 163, Charlie 10, landing up on the way. Only point 403. Take one to the right. Definitely. Yeah. Right side? Right. 
Brett, it is clear. Text camera? Yes, please. Japan 257, contact Thank you. Bata. Switch to departure, Japan 257. Nice, nice approach. Only phone 403, wind 200 at 18. Rave 16 left, clear for takeoff. Uh, thank you. Rave 16 left, clear for takeoff, only phone 403. Keep that for the hotel. No, no, it's forbidden. Come on, get the towel yeah. for his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Romeo is the next to the left. It's the way we briefed. Then we need to change the taxi chart. Yeah, very nice approach. So fun to fly to Matthias here. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. It's amazing. Tokyo Towers, Japan 143 on Kilo already. Japan 143, Tokyo Tower, runway 16 left, line up and wait. Japan 143, runway 16 left, line up and wait. Only phone, five nine are ready. Only phone, five nine are Tokyo Tower. Hold the shot of runway one six left. Hold the shot one six left. Only phone, five nine. Only phone, four zero three. Contact departure. Contact departure. Only phone, four zero three. Yep. Yep. Yes. With a down slope. There's the fuel fuel flight home. <laughs> Probably it's delivered by ships. You see all the the oil tanks. Yeah. Yeah. The 714, we are approaching also. 714, contact to ground. 118, decimal 22. 714, 118, bye bye. Say nada. Say nada. 7462, Tokyo Ground, taxi via Echo Zulu. Taxi by Echo Zulu, 614, Tokyo Ground, uh, good morning, Lufthansa 714, heavy on Romeo. Good morning, Lufthansa 714, Tokyo Ground, taxi by Romeo, left on Golf. 714 taxi via Romeo, uh, left on Golf. So it's straight ahead, yes. and Golf is then after the Avery to the left. Already up. Only 269, now we have 6 at Lima 10, line up and wait. Now we have 6 at Lima 10, line up and wait, only 0.69. Lufthansa 714, close, now we have 6 at Alpha 2, contact line 1 2 1 Lufthansa 714, cross uh, 16 right over 2, ground 1162, sayonara. Sayonara, Sky AA, contact down, 118, Sky AA, 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 Lufthansa 714, Tokyo Ground, taxi via Papa 2, Papa, hold short of Papa 4. 714 via Papa 2, Papa holding short, Papa 4. Second one to the right. Pushing back, so. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I think it's, it's vacating our position. Yeah, yeah, correct. Perfect timing. It's yep. a good idea to give him pushback. <laughs> Lufthansa 714, taxi to spot. 714, taxi to spot. Thank you, Zainara. Zainara. Tokyo Ground, Olipon 110, request pushback, spot 108, information, Delta. And it says 350, 900. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 35. You can read that? Yeah, I can read that. Very good, very good, yeah. I have problems with that, just okay. with that yep. one. Yeah. Only point eight oh five five runway one six right. Taxi via Papa six Papa hold short of mic. Taxi via Papa six Papa hold short mic runway one six right on the point eight five five.
Hello, good morning, cockpit. Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Tokyo Chelsea position. Thank you very much. Aircraft is fine. Perfect. Parking checklist. Parking. Parking brake. Off. Parking checklist complete. That was easy. Nicely done. So now we, we earned the beer and sushi. <laughs>